Hello, I'm Gail Robinson at Paducah Community College, and with me today is Mr. Henry Whitlow. Mr. Whitlow and I will be discussing a project that's very exciting that will soon be uh, planned in Paducah, and that is the River Heritage Center. Thank you for being with me today, Mr. Whitlow. I'm pleased to. I've been interested in this project since the beginning of the discussion of it, and I'm just pleased to do what I can in connection with it. Well, the River Heritage Center is uh, going to be a wonderful facility on the riverfront, and it's going to have all kinds of exhibits and information in it about the river industry, past, present, and future. How did you become involved in the planning of this project? I've been somewhat associated with the river uh, since I was just a small child. We lived about three miles from the Ohio River. At that time, most of the supplies and communications with our area were on the river. The packet boats that came by, and then for just a little recreation, uh, the uh, show boats that would park at the, some of the landings, Ogden's Landing, Turner Landing, and the, I remember as a child here in the Calliope, and people were just uh, centered toward the river for their communications. Then later, of course, in my law practice, I've been very closely associated with some river interest in the, the legal field and just seemed like always I've had a, a penchant for the river and have had uh, uh, quite a bit that I do in connection with the river. In your understanding of the project, can you give our audience an idea of what they can expect when this project reach, reaches completion? I have seen a uh, mock-up of it which has been completed been very thoroughly researched by uh, officials and people who are skilled in that field, and it depicts a, a very attractive place uh, on the riverfront with uh, many things uh, thought of. That is a, an, an observation deck from uh, one of the top stories uh, so they can see the river up and down, see the traffic on it. And there'll be a number of exhibits and uh, a, actually a mock-up of the river across the uh, yard in front of the, uh, uh, the river museum itself. So I think that will give people a, a, a feeling uh, more of what the river means and how it uh, works, the locks and the dams and the uh, traffic on the river. And uh, it will certainly stimulate that interest and that knowledge the committee has been working very hard on this concept for about 18 months now. In what ways have you prepared yourself as a committee for this project? Well, the very first meeting, I think, with the uh, designers was an effort just to get people to state what their interest was and what background they had. For instance, I uh, contributed my little bit about uh, the background in Ballard County and then some about my work with the river interest uh, since that time. And various ones had uh, different ideas about it. They had known things and incidents in the history and so on, uh, such as one of the early uh, boats that hauled ties from the upper Miss, uh, the Tennessee up from here quite a bit uh, to supply the rations for the people. They had a cow on a barge in front and some took kitch, uh, chickens and a lot of little tidbits like that that uh, I think would be very interesting to most people. And all of these uh, stories and oral histories will at some point be included in these exhibits? That's the idea, yes. Those that seem to have some uh, interest, and most of them do, uh, they will be shown in one way or another there. What kind of response have you heard from the community as far as this project is concerned? Most uh, who I've heard discuss it are, are very much in favor of it. Of course, uh, the Quilt Museum and, and the Market House Museum, some of the uh, facilities that are already here, I think have given people more interest in something of this sort. And this is a river town, of course. It's a background. It was the first industry that uh, was here. And uh, it has, it's been a, uh, a permanent uh, 
matter of uh, industry and interest on the part of the people. What do you think will make the River Heritage Center work? Why is this a, a viable concept? Well, I think there are a number of, of things. In the first place, I think people are more interested now in our history and in tradition, and uh, museums seem to be well uh, involved in the, his, in the uh, tourist trade and all of that uh, aspect of it. So I think the, not only will the local people be interested in seeing it and understanding the traditions of the river, but I think it'll be a, quite a tourist attraction. What do you think the benefits will be to the community as a whole? One of the things I think uh, needs to be done is to get a feeling on the part of the people here uh, what the river means. I, it's amazing how many people, local people, uh, who don't understand the, the importance of the river from the standpoint of uh, economics and uh, history and tradition. And uh, I think one thing it'll do will be to stimulate interest, like the Quilt Museum has created interest uh, a few years ago. No one thought of Paducah as having any connection with the quilt uh, work. And now uh, the great museum we have down there has brought uh, a consciousness of people in this whole area. And of course, it's a great tourist attraction too. Right. Buses come in with people and it advertises Paducah and uh, there's a lot to improve, not only the uh, economic uh, interest, but the morale and the pride that I think our people have when good institutions like that exist in our community. Mr. Whitlow, I want to thank you for being with us today and sharing your thoughts about the River Heritage Center with uh, Paducah and everyone in our viewing audience. And good luck with this project. It sounds like a very exciting one. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm pleased to be here. And thank you for being with us. And stay tuned for more about the River Heritage Center. Are you familiar with... Hello and welcome to Paducah Community College. I'm Gail Robinson and with me today is Lee Hicklin. Again, we're going to be talking about the River Heritage Center. Mr. Hicklin is a committee member that has been doing a lot of planning for about 18 months regarding that project. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks very much, Gail. Glad to be here. Why don't we start this segment off by giving us a description of what you see the River Heritage Center as being. My understanding is it's going to be something like a museum, but a hands-on exhibit uh, that pays tribute to the marine industry or river industry of uh, Paducah in western Kentucky. Uh, there's been successes across the country in this type of exhibit or museum in the past, and this center will be something that uh, people from all walks of life can enjoy and, and bring their families to and really uh, be an educational uh, uh, experience also. Why is it important that Paducah have one? I think the river industry in Paducah, which is probably the oldest industry we have, has long been in the shadows and they have supported this community and the people for so many years. I think it's important that we now pay tribute to that marine industry. Do you feel that Paducah can support a project of this size on a continuing basis? Well, I really think so. I think this is going to be so attractive and so exciting that people are going to come from all across the country and wouldn't dare drive through Paducah without stopping to see the River Heritage Center. As we mentioned earlier, this project has been in the planning stages and a committee has been working together for about 18 months now. But you've not been working alone. You've been working under the guidance and the assistance of E. Werner Johnson and Associates. What contribution have they made as far as the planning of this project goes? Well, this is a well-known person. This person has had successes all across the country, as close as in St. Louis with the scientific center that he has uh, there. Uh, Mr. Johnson has uh, spent many hours getting the feel for this project from members of the community. I spent countless hours uh, talking with and researching the needs and uh, the available uh, resources that we have and we couldn't have found a better person I believe for this project. What has the community response that you have personally heard been to the River Heritage Center? It's been very very uh, positive. People are really excited about uh, this possibility and just keeping their fingers crossed and hope this is going to become a reality real soon. What benefits will Paducah reap from this? Well certainly we're going to uh, reap benefits from a financial standpoint from tourists, from tourism coming to Paducah to visit 
but uh, people are going to become more aware of the resources we have in the city. When people stop to visit the center, they're going to see the other positive things about Paducah and what a growing community it is. What do you think our young people, you work I know a lot with, with the younger members of our community, why is it important to them to have this project? Well, once again, it goes back, I think, to economic development. It's going to create all kinds of possibilities for them and our community. And maybe they can uh, go away to get trained or train here in, in Paducah for uh, get their college education or technical training and, and come back home and have more opportunities. I want to thank you for being with us today, but more than that, I want to thank you for working on the River Heritage Center project along with a lot of other dedicated members. Well, thanks. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Gail. Thank you for joining us. Hello, I'm Gail Robinson, and with me now is Anton Reese, a member of the River Heritage Committee, and they've been working for quite some time now on the planning for the River Heritage Center, which is an exciting project that will be soon happening in Paducah, I believe, Anton. Definitely. Looking forward to uh, watching this uh, project as it unfolds, Gail. What is the concept for people who don't know of the River Heritage Center? Well, I, I think the River Heritage Center is a, an opportunity for people in the community um, to visually see, you know, see and touch um, history. You know, I think it's an attempt to encompass the historical evolution of the river and all of the things manifested out of the river. What about exhibits, things to do? How are we going to have this information take place and change hands? Well, um, basically, um, from my understanding of seeing the, the working model, um, I believe it's a, probably about a six-story building. Uh, each floor would have uh, some aspect um, of the, uh, the, the, from the river. Um, you know, some of the things that uh, was intriguing to me, uh, for example, was seeing the, uh, the flood levels of the river. Um, also a, a visual simulcast, computer type thing, where you could see the uh, changes, uh, the seasons. Um, and, and naturally, I think most people, when they think of the river, um, you know, particularly with the recent flooding situation, um, that should really be one of the big draws, seeing how the uh, city was. Uh, basically immersed on the water in the 30s. What do you think the most important aspect of all those things will be to the community? I think twofold educational and informational. Um, you know, what, what drew me to the project um, was a fact to uh, offer some sort of input. I mean, I'm not from Paducah. This is my fourth year here, but you can look around and see the tremendous resources. So I think that uh, the information aspect of it um, for the community and, and, and visitors and the educational aspect, particularly for the, uh, the students. What kind of response have you been hearing to this project? Well, I tell you, when they unveiled the, uh, the model at the library, there was a pretty uh, sizable crowd on hand, and you know, everyone was intrigued, particularly with the architecture. I think um, um, definitely a lot of work you know, went into the, uh, at least the projection of what this thing is supposed to look like. So I, I thought it was, uh, I think it's been pretty positive from what I've heard so far. What kind of economic impact do you foresee, and I know this is kind of a put your crystal ball down <laughs> and look into the future, but do you see for the community? Well, I think twofold. I think, um, to my knowledge, it's probably the only one in the state of that nature, so it should be a unique uh, tourist draw to people uh, to come into Paducah. Um, it's a good way of exhibiting, once again, the resources. Um, if, if that goes well, I think it could be a tremendous uh, boost locally, you know, a part of the whole revitalization of downtown. That's been a concern. I think of a lot of people, and I think that uh, this is one attempt uh, to get, you know, to revitalize the downtown area. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about E. Werner Johnson. He's been involved in the planning of this and has done several uh, very important and well-known museums across the country. Well, you know, I, I tell you, um, you know, coming into our process is, is when I say complex, I mean in terms of the magnitude of this project. Um, I think Mr. Johnson uh, uh, really. Uh, took us through uh, step by step um, how this process would unfold. Uh, obviously, at the very beginning, it's kind of intimidating a project this large, but uh, seeing that he had considerable experience uh, in doing this all across the country and showing some excerpts of his work, I think that you know uh, brought about some sense of confidence in him. And I think then, as watching this process unfold from basically a piece of land to uh, a structure of this magnitude, I think for everyone involved, that within itself was a learning process. So. I think he's pretty much like a master teacher uh, with a vision, you know, and I think that uh, that's a big plus for this project. He's, he's, a, he's a vital core of, of this project. Can the city, the size of ours, 
support this project on a continuing basis? Well, I think it will be it will be challenging. Um, you know, I, I don't think by any stretch of the imagination that you know raising funds is something that we all look forward to doing necessarily. But I think that if uh, people can really uh, put in perspective the significance of this, the unique nature of it, and I think it is a way of really getting uh, a sense of community. So I, I think that it is very possible. Um, I just think that basically if people could come and maybe see the working model, which I believe is, is still on display, um, to see the building, um, see what it has to offer, and, and pretty much how it could, uh, in terms of the ongoing, I think from the educational aspect, particularly for I think of school groups, church groups, visiting groups from the surrounding areas, I, I see that as a definite plus and a workable goal. Well, Anton, thank you for joining us today and sharing your thoughts on the River Heritage Center. It sounds exciting. My pleasure. Yes, great project. And Come on and support it. Stay tuned for more on the River Heritage Center in Paducah. Welcome to Paducah Community College and our look at the Paducah River Heritage Center. My guest for this segment of our program is Shirley Hoy, who has been involved in the planning stages on the River Heritage Committee for about 18 months now, right, Shirley? Even longer than that, before we ever organized, I was a member of the group of people that first started talking about having River Heritage Center. Uh, tell us just a little bit about what the River Heritage Center is. It will be a very educational, but a very entertaining way to learn what makes Paducah unique, being right on the river and associated with many river companies. And because of transportation coming uh, right to our shores, it has uh, entertained lots of interesting, unique people along the way. So there will be exhibits that will tell stories about each facet of living on the river. And we think that we have a history rich in these kinds of stories. What drew you to this project, Shirley? Well, when my husband and I brought our family, moved to Paducah in 1970, we were attracted here because we liked living in a river town. And we'd we moved here from another river town, but in that town they c tried to wall out the river and people tried to forget that the river came close by because of the horrible experiences I'm sure they'd had in 1937. But we loved it because Paducah was opening up their river and starting to appreciate it. And at that time, I remember Tom Wilson who was starting to have the summer festivals down at the river. And we enjoyed those summer activities so very much and took part in those early days and have enjoyed it ever since. So you just wanted to be involved with making the river more prominent That's as right. a part of our history. Right. What is your role on this committee now? I've served as secretary for many years and uh, I enjoyed keeping the records of our meetings. Why will the River Heritage Center work in Paducah? Because it appeals to all ages. I've seen it happen in other cities where they have uh, facilities that not only provide entertainment but hands-on enjoyable activities and projects and exhibits that young children enjoy and older people enjoy. Um, it will be a chance for our older citizens to come and reflect on those early days of the river and the river companies and all the interesting things that happened down at our riverfront and uh, all the activities around the flood. And so it appeals to all ages. If it were just for one single group, I think it would be hard to support this type of facility. But we have no end to the appeal that will be with our facility. What do you see as the most important aspect of the project? What? The education that it will bring, a new appreciation to our residents here and of this area and anyone who visits our center will see how important Paducah has been 
to the history of Kentucky, but the whole world, because of the river travel and the industry that takes place here, we touch the four corners of the earth from Paducah. And sometimes it's good to know how far reaching one's efforts go. The committee has been very involved in several stages of the planning from, as you said, for years now. And yes. What kind of, of things has that group done to prepare themselves for this project? Well, as we travel or contact people from other areas, we inquire about if they have any river facilities like this, and we've made definite studies of other areas and other facilities that have been in use for a number of years and compared those figures to ours. And we have come up with only positive feelings about how successful this will be in bringing in attracting thousands more to our area. What about the community? That's other communities. How have they responded to you here in Paducah? Well, I think about when we have um, shown the model of our dream, we have invited a wide range of citizens from the area, plus school children of all ages. And everyone has been positive in accepting this project and thinking that we have had people with the right ideas and the far-reaching concept that we needed for this and that it's a very doable project. What is your response to the project, Charlotte? Well, uh, like all the other members of the committee, I know we have a lot of hard work cut out for us in the future, but I feel very positively that we can do this and that it's going to add a great deal to all the other interesting things we have going on in our riverfront downtown development. I'm very positive on Paducah's downtown. Well, I want to thank you for coming and sharing your thoughts about this project with us. Glad to do it. Yes, thank you. And thank you for joining us, and stay tuned for more updates on the River Heritage Center. Hello, I'm Gail Robinson with Paducah Community College, and my guest for today's update on the River Heritage Center progress is Mr. Roger Kellner. Mr. Kellner is a member of the River Heritage Center Committee, as well as an insurance agent for Bradshaw and Will, specializing in marine um, insurance policies, and he is also the current president of the Paducah Propeller Club. So he's very well versed in the river industry, and we want to thank you for being with us today, Roger. It's my pleasure. We're here today, as you know, to discuss the progress of the planning on the River Heritage Center. And could you give us your ideas on the concept of the center itself? Well, I'm very enthusiastic on the concept of the center, obviously, uh, serving on the board. Uh, I think it's going to be a wonderful thing, not only for Paducah, but the surrounding area. Uh, I think it should encompass uh, a great opportunity to further education, for preserving history, and to bring us up to date with current things that are going on as far as the river is concerned. I'm, I'm talking about the commercial aspects of the river at this time. Right. Now what drew you to this project? Well, I was drawn to the project uh, uh, basically through the Propeller Club and my interest in the, in the rivers and uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, come up with a, a focal point for Paducah uh, in, in exploring this avenue uh, and, and, pre and preserving our heritage uh, for the river. Why Paducah? You mentioned earlier that you thought Paducah was an excellent location. Why? Oh, I think Paducah is uh, not only an excellent but just a, an obvious location because it's uh, really the focal point of the Western River system. Uh, when one looks at the Mississippi and Missouri and Ohio and Tennessee rivers, uh, Paducah really is the crossroads of the Western River system. Uh, we have the we have commercial traffic from the Pittsburgh area all the way to New Orleans. We have commercial traffic from the uh, uh, Upper Mississippi River and Missouri River that can cross here at Paducah and go down the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway to Mobile. It's, it's a, just a perfect focal point and crossroads for the commercial river traffic. 
In your mind, what is the most important aspect of the River Heritage Center? Well, I think it's a combination, Gail. I think that we have a, a great opportunity for education of our young people through the school system. I think it's a great way of preserving history. And, I, and, and even beyond that, I think it's a great, uh, it would be a great tourist attraction. Uh, it would, uh, I think, be great along with our riverfront, along with the Quilt Museum. Uh, just a great focal point for preserving our history and, and the natural culture. Do you feel that Paducah can support the River Heritage Center on a continuing basis? Once I think it really can, completed? Gail. Uh, I think it's going to uh, uh, change our thinking a little bit, perhaps, but that's progress. And, and uh, I know that the uh, uh, river industry, for example, all of the com commercial marine interests are solidly behind this. It's a, uh, uh, something which they've been looking forward to. They're beginning to think about items which would be on exhibit in there. They're beginning to collect them, for that matter. And uh, I, th I think that uh, with a little bit of change of thinking and, and whatnot, uh, I I'm very enthusiastic that we'll be able to support it. Are there benefits to the river industry itself? Not, not directly, uh, uh, in the sense of, of uh, perhaps uh, uh, economic development of the river. Uh, uh, no, I think it's more a question of what the commercial uh, river marine industry can do for the center and for the area, as opposed to the other way around. You mentioned the response that you had heard to the project from the river industry. What about from the community in general? Uh, those people who are not directly related with the marine industry that I have talked to about this seem to be very enthusiastic. Of course, many of those people uh, are looking at it from an educational viewpoint, from, from uh, uh, the historical viewpoint, and, and tourism. Uh, they're looking at it perhaps just a little differently from the way I'm looking at it, uh, but obviously my interests have been directed from the uh, riverside. As far as the committee is concerned, where are you at this point in the planning process? Well, we, uh, uh, we're on the drawing board. Uh, the model has been built. Uh, it's been on display uh, uh, in various locations throughout the city. And uh, uh, now it's a question, I guess, of uh, uh, seeing what we can do about raising some funds and, and getting it underway. Uh, uh, we, we think it's not far down the road. Why is this project going to work for us? It's going to work because we've got the enthusiasm of the people. Our board uh, uh, encompasses people from all walks of life here in, in, in the Paducah area, uh, and they're solidly behind it. And, and I think it's the enthusiasm, of course, which, is, which makes any, pro uh, any project successful. I want to thank you for joining us today, Roger. You've given us another side that we haven't heard from in some of the other committee members, and that's the commercial river industry aspect. So thank you for joining us today, and good luck with this wonderful project. Well, thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. And you stay tuned for more updates on the River Heritage Center. Hello, I'm Gail Robinson, and welcome to this update on the River Heritage Center. My guest for this segment is Ms. Bertha Wenzel, and Bertha has been on the River Heritage Committee now since its beginning, I believe. Is that right? Yes. I want to thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. Let's start off, Bertha, by how in the world did you become involved in this project? Well, as you know, I have been interested in the folk songs of the river, and uh, I feel that they have a place in the project because they are part of our history and uh, a small segment, but still I think they desire, deserve a place in it. What has the committee's role and your role been in the planning of the project to this point? Well, we each have given our opinion on, on what we value, the various aspects, and, uh, and then they were all totaled some way. <laughs> and, and came up with a real good idea in all. What do you feel is the most important aspect of the River Heritage Center? Oh my. Well, I think the educational part of it, which covers a whole, whole lot, but uh, I think the education uh, in, in the history and uh, in the future, the past, and... You've also been working closely with uh, a planner, a professional planner, yes. E. Werner Johnson. Mm -hmm. What do you feel his contribution has been to the project? Oh, well, it's, it's been monumental since uh, 
uh, he's worked on other such projects and he knew how to go about it. I, uh, I wouldn't have had any idea how, how it all came to him and unfolded, but it's just marvelous. He has worked uh, in depth on a lot of different projects. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of the exhibits that he's been are involved with are very distinguished and, and very respectable. The Ramesses II exhibit, mm -hmm. the Science Discovery Museum in St. Louis. So he has, as you said, done a lot of this kind of planning before. Um, how do you see it when you picture the River Heritage Center? What Describe that for our viewers who have not had an opportunity to see the model, please. Ooh. Well, it's, uh, 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 it's hard for me to say because, of course, I haven't seen the real thing, but the model was, was uh, fascinating, and I, I hope people have seen the model. I, I, it is on display now, is it? Yes, it is well, on display. I haven't seen Hall, it other than the, first, uh, the opening there. And uh, I guess it gives the appearance of a steamboat was the idea or, uh, in, in, in total, I guess. And, uh, and then the fact that you can go up and above the flood wall is, is great when you get in, inside the building. Mm -hmm. and, and then I think that the, the uh, map on the outside is interesting that you can walk along the river, so to speak, a, a whole length of the river that will be laid out in a little uh, map-like thing on the, on, the, on the front of the building. As we mentioned earlier, your special interest in this project is the folk songs of the river. To your knowledge, are they going to be involved in any of the exhibits that will be? I I'm, don't know yet. I'm sure they can find a place for them, and I hope they will try. I think they will. Why do you feel Paducah is a good location? Mm. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be uh, 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 certainly. Um, uh, what am I saying, uh, prejudiced on the ho whole aspect of it, but uh, Paducah is my hometown and I'm interested in anything that's going to draw uh, tourism and I think it will and, and uh, um, the, our situation in that we've been a river city all Paducah's life, I think makes it a good spot. Right. Um, what has community response been? What have you heard from individuals? Well, I'm, all of us there were excited about it, and I, I don't know that I've talked to anybody other, uh, other than in the, uh, in the meetings we've had. Why do you think this project is going to work? <laughs> well, I think it will because we'll all be behind it, and, uh, and I think when it's publicized and, and you have your little say in, in, in it, and uh, we, we show this great video, <laughs> We hope that it will uh, spur people on to, to make contributions to it. And, um, and I think it's such a far-reaching thing into the future that people certainly should see the value of it. Speaking of the future, can Paducah support this kind of project on a continuing basis? Well, the way they've mapped it out for us, I, I think we can. Good. Thank you, Bertha, for being with us today, and thank you for joining us. And join us again soon for another update on the River Heritage Center right here in Paducah. Hello, I'm Gail Robinson at Paducah Community College, and my guest for this segment of the River Heritage Center update is Ms. Jean Ross, who is with the Cabinet of Economic Development. Thank you, Jean, for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Gail, for inviting me to participate in this uh, role. What has your role been in uh, the committee as far as the River Heritage Center? What draw you to it? Well, I was asked by the Cabinet for Economic Development if I would serve as a committee member on the Riverfront Heritage uh, Committee, and um, it was from that request that I was given the opportunity to do this. I've been very pleased and enjoyed it very much, and uh, I think it's a wonderful project and just happy to be a part of it. It is exciting. Yes. What is the Cabinet of Economic Development's role in this project? Well, I would think that the uh, Cabinet for Economic Development is really broken down into five different uh, divisions or de uh, so a development of community development, Department of Community Development, it uh, definitely includes anything that's going on within a community, any kind of community development projects. And I serve 11 counties, uh, 
McCracken County being one, but all of western, far western Kentucky, uh, beginning with Trigg, Line, and Livingston, and all the way to the Mississippi River. So anything dealing with community development is, uh, falls under uh, my role as uh, economic development specialist for the cabinet. Uh, for is uh, the cabinet's role in the project, I would think we would probably say that it'd be a support. We will be looking for avenues, all the ways that we possibly could help the, depo uh, the project as it begins to unfold, if, even if it's infrastructure or if it's a support role, or uh, we'll be looking for the many avenues that we possibly could help with finances. Well, I'm sure that there will be many opportunities I'm sure that's for help to in be. those areas. Um, what do you see as the most important aspect of the River Heritage Center? Well, I think uh, probably educational. I see it as a wonderful opportunity for the many, many uh, schools in the area to come to actually visit and gain research and knowledge from, from the museum. Historically and educationally, it's going to be one of the greatest things that's going to be happening for Western Kentucky. Do you think that the site of Paducah in the Western Kentucky area has been a good location to be chosen for the River Heritage Center? Oh, the very best. Where else could you have all the rivers coming together um, the, with uh, all of the, uh, the River Heritage that's here in Paducah? Definitely, it's the place that this museum should have been. You mentioned earlier when we were speaking about the importance of marketing and speaking of the River Heritage Center, not as Paducah's center, but as Kentucky or at least Western Kentucky's center. Why do you feel that's so important, Jean? Well, I think that is, is going to be the most important thing of actually developing this museum is that it must include more than just Paducah. It must include West Kentucky and even maybe, might even claim Kentucky because uh, the rivers are not just Paducah, the rivers are the whole area, so we must bring all of the area together for this project. Do you also feel that that's important in the marketing of the project as well? Definitely. It must be that way to market a project of this enormous uh, uh, amount of money that's going to be spent for this and the magnitude of this project. It must be an area project, not a Paducah project. Do you feel that this can work, and if so, why can it? Oh, it can work. Definitely, it will work. With the leadership of uh, the people of uh, Paducah, Mayor Montgomery, Gail Fry, the many, uh, Ken Wheeler, the many people that are working on this project and been in on it from the very beginning, I, have, I feel very confident it's going to work, and it's going to work very well. It's going to be something that we will all be very proud of. Well, I want to thank you for being our guest on this segment of our updates on the River Heritage Center, and thank you for joining us, and stay tuned for more information. Hello and welcome to Paducah Community College. I'm Gail Robinson and welcome to a PCC update on the River Heritage Center which is being planned for the downtown Paducah area. We've had several different guests on these updates and my guest for this segment is Harry Ruth. Harry is a member of the River Heritage Committee and as a matter of fact I think a board of directors with that group. Thank That's you correct, Harry. Gail. Thank you for inviting me today. Let's start off Harry by discussing what drew you to the project. Why is it important to you? Well, this is really a community-wide project, and in our role as an economic development office, we must uh, pay attention to many things other than just recruiting companies to come to the area. It's important that we provide a good climate and a good environment from both uh, a financial standpoint and also a cultural standpoint, and this is certainly a cultural piece for our community. What overall effect will this project have on our community in the area of economic development? Well, a lot of the companies and people that we're talking to about relocating uh, operations or job creation or capital investment to Paducah and McCracken County come from metropolitan areas, and it's uh, always a question in their minds about the cultural shock that they will encounter when they leave uh, areas like the big cities and give up uh, what they perceive as the cultural opportunities. So we want to uh, have uh, things in place for them here to not only substitute, but make them realize that to get a better quality of life and uh, more family values, they do not have to give up cultural activities at the same time. 
There are a lot of exciting things that have been planned recently and completed recently in this area, major projects similar to this one, maybe not of this caliber. How does this project of the River Heritage Center fit in with the rest of those? I think it's another indication that Paducah and McCracken County is really uh, assuming and reassuming a leadership role in western Kentucky. Uh, there are, as you mentioned, a number of projects now that are very exciting for our future. And as I often articulate to the folks, generally in a generation you have one or two major projects. We have about six or eight on the boards now, all happening at the same time, and that's uh, very exciting for our future. Uh, those opportunities are there for us now to take advantage of, and uh, I believe that the momentum and the spirit and the attitude is right in this community now to take advantage of those opportunities. Why is Paducah the right location for the River Heritage Center? Well, it's a natural fit because of our river heritage and the long-standing history that we have as a river community and goes back to the days of the flatboats and the uh, early settlers coming down the river to settle new communities along the river. And uh, so that was our beginning. And the uh, fact that uh, the river industry is a big player in our economy now and a very substantial one, uh, we need to celebrate those ideas and not turn our backs on the river like a lot of cities have done, but look back toward the river and realize from where we come and where we're at and where we're going. And the river and the river heritage plays a big part in that. Yesterday I was doing one of these interviews with someone from the river industry and I said, what can this center bring to the river industry? And he said, well, I'm not sure that it's what the center can bring to the industry, but what the industry can bring to the center. Do you have any feeling about that either way? Well, I think yes, that he's in, uh, that person was entirely right. Uh, a lot of this was keyed on the fact that the river industry is so important to us. Uh, that's not the only ingredient, of course, but um, we found very early that uh, the fact that the river industry is a, a big economic leg in our community means that uh, we need to recognize that and acknowledge it. The River Heritage Center kind of grew out of uh, a little bit of that uh, sense of, uh, of being. Everyone has a different impression of what the most important aspect of the planned center will be. What is yours? I think it's perhaps one that's uh, perhaps maybe a little more intangible than other answers you might get, but uh, I think it's important for our image, our uh, vision for the future, the leadership role that I mentioned earlier that we have uh, uh, stimulated and that we're strengthening every day to show that Paducah and McCracken County is truly on the move and that we're doing a lot of things on a broad comprehensive scale that we're not just building roads or new schools or recreational facilities but we're paying attention to the cultural activities as well and uh, the downtown and riverfront uh, redevelopment ideas fit very well into all of these comprehensive plans so um, I don't know that it's going to create a lot of necessarily direct jobs. It'll generate probably a lot of tourism dollars and people visiting our communities. But it's the image that it gives us, and I think that's something that we of often overlook. The image that a community presents it to visitors and to corporate officials coming in uh, mean that we care about our own community. And believe me, the corporate officials I talk to are not willing or not anxious to make investments in communities that don't care about themselves. So it's very important to us to continue to care about Paducah and what we do here. In every regard, that's right. Why is this going to work, Harry? Well, I think the timing is right that uh, uh, as the mayor and the city commission and all of those other uh, community leaders that have been involved in revitalizing downtown, this is a, uh, uh, a critical piece of the whole puzzle and uh, certainly is well thought out, well designed. I think we were extremely fortunate to get Werner Johnson to work on the project. Both he and Ron Coles and all of the other volunteers have spent an enormous amount of time and thinking and meditating about what's right for downtown and what is the right approach to a center, River Heritage Center. So this has not been a knee-jerk or a impulsive project. It's one that's been a long time in the planning and um, I think uh, the appropriate time is upon us to uh, begin the serious implementation of the plan. I want to thank you for being with us today and sharing your views on the River Heritage Center. Thank you, Gail. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us. And stay with us and you'll periodically get more updates on the River Heritage Center planned in Paducah.
Hello, I'm Gail Robinson with Paducah Community College. And with me now for the River Heritage Center update is Scott Sieber, another member of that committee. Thank you, Scott, for joining us this morning. Thank you for inviting me, Gail. Let's start off by telling everyone what role you have on this committee and what drew you to the project in the first place. I think my role um, was, is probably similar to the, that of many others, to, to try to bring my ideas, uh, the way I saw the region, the way I saw the region connecting with uh, this facility and the potential that it had to, uh, to improve the educational and entertainment value that we have uh, in Western Kentucky. What drew me to the project, I think, was when I looked at the list of people, uh, elected officials, appointed officials, and business and community leaders uh, that were involved in this project, that said to me that this is, this is something that's worthwhile. It's something I want to be involved in. It's something I think TVA and Land Between the Lakes will take an interest in. And, and I was excited about it from the beginning. What impact do you feel this project can have on the Land Between the Lakes programs? I think it can be dramatic, uh, not just for Land Between the Lakes, certainly, but uh, for the entire region. I think the educational opportunity for, for young people, uh, young people of all ages, uh, for that matter, to come to this center and see the connection of the river uh, to, the, to the land and to the people and to what this uh, region is about, which is about water. Uh, if you go back to the prehistory, to the settlement, to uh, the history and the commerce of this region, they're so tied to the rivers that uh, it's something that's uh, woven into all our lives, the people that, uh, that grew up in western Kentucky and those of us who moved here. That's something that uh, you and I spoke about briefly earlier, and I think you wanted to address that a little bit more in detail, what the river has meant to the community and why it's important for our young people to know about that. It is, and uh, if you look at the Tennessee and the Cumberland River, nowhere else on earth do two rivers flow so far side by side and never join naturally, almost 100 miles. Uh, the four rivers, the Mississippi, the Ohio, the Cumberland, and the Tennessee join within 50 miles of one another. Nowhere else on earth does that happen. Uh, we're at the confluence of uh, several great transportation systems, ground transportation with uh, the interstate highways, the coming Canada to Mexico highway that's not in the not too distant future. Uh, but when you get back to the rivers and you look at what's happened uh, since uh, the Indians were here, uh, prehistory, the, uh, the settlement, uh, and, the, and the Civil War, and all the commerce that's developed, and all the potential that this, uh, this project holds, it's, uh, it's something that people really need to be aware of. And I think this facility and this program and the opportunity that it brings will connect young people in particular and, uh, and people of all ages to the river and what it's meant to this region. Another interesting concept that we were discussing was the role that the river plays in our lives. You mentioned that um, a long time ago, years ago, that it served to divide people and in the future it was going to serve to pull people together and join them. I think in a sense that's true. If you're familiar with this region and the between the rivers, which is, which is now between the lakes, uh, the rivers more or less divided those people. You know, there were no bridges at the time, there were ferries at various locations, but uh, if you lived between the rivers, you were cut off in many ways from the outside world, certainly at certain times of the year. Uh, the bridges have uh, solved a lot of those problems since, uh, since they were constructed with Kentucky Dam and, uh, in, the, in the 30s and 40s. I think this facility, uh, the River Heritage Center, uh, has that same opportunity educationally and in, from an entertainment standpoint to, uh, to bring the river closer to the people to allow them uh, to connect with it, to, to begin to understand uh, what an important link it is in our lives, both from a commercial standpoint and uh, in more recent years from a recreational standpoint. What impact do you think that the center will have on this region as a whole? I think it can be dramatic, and I think the reason it will be dramatic is because the community uh, has been engaged in this process. A lot of times when you look at centers, uh, museums of, of this uh, nature, the community is not brought into the process very early on. I think it's important that uh, people who really cared about this project got involved at the very beginning and reached out to the people in this region. They sought their opinions and I think they've got a broad cross-section of opinion and what you're going to see in this facility is the reflection of what people uh, really believe in in this region and as it connects to the river and that's, that's something that's important and I think I'm glad that it was done that way. Do you think there will be enough interest in this project to support it on a continuing basis? I think so. Uh, it's, it's an expensive project uh, if, if, you, if you just talk in terms of the dollar value, but I think if you look at the value that will be received, uh, uh, both from the standpoint of the education of young people in western Kentucky and, and the five-state area, 
uh, really. But it goes beyond that. It uh, reaches out to the country and to the world because this is a facility that if it's done and done well, and I think it will be, we've, uh, we've had the opportunity to work with one of the, uh, the, the best consultants uh, that I've had the pleasure to be around, uh, Bernard Johnson and Associates, uh, on this project. And I think it's going to be a very well done facility. I think it will uh, it'll be uh, a very quality development. It's one that we can all be proud of in this region. I think individually, collectively, the organizations uh, that I'm a part of will, will be supportive of this effort. And for people in our audience who do not know, Mr. Johnson has numerous credits. He certainly does. I, you, you look at his resume and it reads like a who's who of uh, uh, the best consulting projects in this country and he's been in on some outstanding projects and I, I know others will speak to that in more detail but it's it was exciting for me and I know the other people on the committee to to be involved with him and to hear his ideas and to hear how he had taken uh, what we had to say and our suggestions and uh, incorporated them into the theme that uh, is going to be a part of the final product. Not only did he do the planning and, and uh, that sort of arrangements and that sort of detail work for this project. He also did surveys and studies of our region and our area. He sure did and they were detailed. I know I had the opportunity and several of our staff at Land Between Lakes uh, did to respond to his questions and they were, uh, uh, they were very searching in their, in their efforts. They did not want to go into this and, uh, and try to draw a bullseye around the arrow if you know what I'm, I'm, I'm saying. They wanted to uh, to be honest with themselves and honest with the people on the committee and they wanted to get a really good feel from this entire region about what, uh, what the prospects were for this project, both from the development uh, standpoint and from the, uh, uh, the final product that would be on the ground. Simply from meeting some of the other committee members, it's very interesting to see the diverse backgrounds that you all have. It, it is. It's been very interesting for me. Uh, a lot of the people I knew by name and by reputation and uh, I had not had the opportunity to work with them in, in, in a situation such as this and it's been an exciting, it's been a learning experience I think for all of us. I think I know a little bit more about Paducah, McCracken County and the five state area and certainly the people uh, in it than I did before this uh, started and from that perspective I feel really good about that and I hope uh, people that have worked with me and others on the committee have uh, had an opportunity to reach out to folks that they didn't know as well also. I want to thank you for coming to Paducah and joining us for this particular program, Scott. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for an update on the River Heritage Center. Stay tuned for more. Welcome to Paducah Community College Update. I'm Gail Robinson and today we're going to be talking about the River Heritage Center that's planned for our area and with me for this session I have Marvin Devers who is also a committee member for the River Heritage Center. Thank you for joining us Marvin. Thank you very much for inviting me Gail. I think that the River uh, Heritage Museum and Center is a very interesting and, and a, will be a great addition to uh, the city of Paducah. What drew you to the project initially, Marvin? Well, I think the opportunity to participate in a program uh, and from its concept to, to finish that would provide additional information regarding the rivers. It would only, it would also be very entertaining and would be very educational. Uh, to the citizens of, of Paducah and to the many people that travel in and out of Paducah. What effect do you feel this will have on our community? I think it will have a very positive uh, effect uh, with Paducah being known as a hub community and it uh, has other museums like the, the Quilt Museum that is a first class uh, museum uh, that would support uh, the feed off to a, a river type of museum and, and history. Uh, we have people that, that flow in and out of, out of Paducah that's shopping uh, every day and it, it just adds another attraction to draw people to Paducah. Why Paducah? Why was, the, uh, was this the best site? for a planned center? I think that the river 
with its confluences of, of other major rivers at the city of Paducah, uh, offers a very historical and, and information regarding the, the river industry itself. And I believe that it would, will serve uh, uh, from an educational standpoint uh, regarding the river systems. And I think that it will, the other points of interest in, in Paducah will draw to the River Heritage Museum. Why do you think this project will work? I think that because that Paducah's river heritage and the lack of information and lack of, of other centers that provide information for, for tourists and citizens of, of McCracken County, that uh, it's an ideal location and I think that it will will be a success uh, that the museums will will have a draw that will support each other and I think just an opportunity to to come to Paducah and, and to learn and to see a first-class museum uh, will be the main attraction you have been working with other members of this committee, as well as with the project manager for the city of Paducah, Gail Fry, and E. Werner Johnson, who was the paid planner and consultant for this project. What kind of things has the committee done in these over 18 months to prepare themselves for this point in the project? Well, the committee has been involved in a lot of the, the modeling that's gone forth, uh, the budgeting uh, restraints and, and commitments. Uh, committee members have visited uh, other cities uh, that has river museums uh, and museums, not only river but other museums. Uh, we're very fortunate to have a, a Werner Johnson that, that would give his expertise to, to a project that would be, hopefully, that will end up being located in Paducah, Kentucky. Well, I want to thank you for your time, not only in coming out to the studio today to speak with me, but in everything that you've done in helping to plan for this project in Paducah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I hope that uh, the people will enjoy the museum as much as I have enjoyed participating in the planning of, of this museum. Well, thank you again, Marvin, and thank you for joining us. And stay tuned for more on the River Heritage Center.